when it comes to nymphing, why people may not like it as much, I mean, it's personal preference, but nymphing gets the job done. You know, I come out to the rivers, like the Green River here, hoping to go for some dry fly action, get some fish on the surface, but unfortunately, there are times where they're just not looking up, and we need to kind of go down to the fish's level. And that's where nymph fishing kind of plays a huge role, uh, if you want to catch fish, that is. So we put it in right below the dam, and it just, it, this is one of the great things about fly fishing, it's, it's humble pie quite a bit. You learn from your lessons, and this is all new water to me. And we spent basically the first hour and a half, two hours, just fumbling around, trying to dial in the nymphing rig. We weren't, ca we weren't catching any fish, trying to go for dry flies, only had a few fish look at the dry fly. And then finally, it took about a good two, two and a half hours, but we got a nymphing rig dialed in, a Euro rig with a bottom bouncing kind of adaptation. And we started sticking fish here on the latter half of our drift uh, on the Green River today. Hi, my name is George Daniel. I am from central Pennsylvania. I'm a fly fishing guide, instructor, author, and also I teach fly fishing at Penn State University. So one of the things I realized today, fish were not really active. They weren't really looking up, at least for us, for the most part. So we needed to go down. I tried the bobber rig, had a few fish uh, on the bobber rig, but the fish were kind of down deep. So what I ended up doing was basically adapting a European nymphing rig, you know, with a cider, very long tippet, and then doing a bottom bouncing rig, putting four size B split shot on the bottom. And then we had two small droppers, a little PMB style nymph, and then a midge above that but really just rocking it down along the bottom, right along maybe the first six to eight inches of the water column off the bottom. And then we started catching fish, but it wasn't until we actually started like literally coming in contact with bottom were we able to start moving a few fish and getting a few fish in the net. One of the biggest things with nymphing is fishing below the surface, unlike dry fly fishing where you can actually see the fish come up and hit your fly. With nymphing, you don't have that visibility. What you need is a degree of tension. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to throw the flies in the water, but still maintain some degree of contact. If you have too much slack, you're never gonna be able to see or register that strike. So the big part with the cast is just a nice upper body position and just a smooth cast. You, this is not a nymphing cast where you wanna put a lot of slack body upright, make a nice tight cast. You want to keep that line fairly taut as soon as the rod tip stops. And as soon as the flies drop, one of the biggest mistakes most people do is they want to put too much drag, especially with European nymphing tight line systems. They want to drag. One of the things that we're trying to do is actually get the flies to sink to a true 90 degrees. When, when the flies are directly under the rod tip or straight up and down, the flies are allowed to drift more naturally and kind of drift just like a dry fly. You, you don't want to drag your dry fly. You don't want to drag your, drag your nymph. So casting, not moving the rod tip too much, too fast, too soon. Instead, cast, instead of moving the rod tip, we're just gonna keep the line hand. And if you notice, I'm using my line hand a lot to manage the drift rather than moving the rod tip. So you're gonna cast, manage the slack until that cider, which is that colored material, goes to a true 90, and then you hang it. Once it's hung, then you can kind of lead the flies throughout the presentation. But that good cast, getting the flies to a true 90 degrees, and then drifting them through there, that's probably the two most important parts when it comes to European nymphing. I've been through a number of jet boats. I've been through a number of different drift boats, uh, some pontoons. And if I was to pick one boat and I've kind of gone through like a minimalist stage, it would be the Flycraft. And that's the boat that I have right now. I have a two man and I have a three man. If I was to pick just one boat to kind of handle any of the waters, east, west, uh, still water, moving water, it would be the Stealth X. And that's the reason why I, I use them.